Welcome back everyone and join me as in today's video we are going to be discussing Petrun Claymore from Transylvania. Coming up! Nice to see you all again. A uh, new week, new video, new review, new high-end shoes. Uh, this time we're going to be discussing, as I said, uh, Petru and Claymore from Transylvania, Romania. And this is a very special pair that was sent to me from uh, one of you viewers, which I really appreciate. Thank you very much for your support. And uh, as I said, uh, this might not sound like something familiar to you, Petru and Claymore. Uh, however, this is a very high-end shoemaking brand, relatively new. Uh, that has its actual roots and beginning since like 2000, but was established in 2018 as a more formal brand. And uh, the owners, uh, well at least one of the owners, uh, had the very very popular menswear blog uh, Claymore's List, so you might recognize it from the, from the name. And as you can see maybe from this here, which is the actual box, uh, they have something really special and something really high-end. Uh, so what they did was in 2018 they decided to embrace their roots and uh, make uh, some really high-end shoes in Transylvania. Uh, specifically they make bespoke shoes uh, either in person, which is not really possible right now, or through uh, you would say remote bespoke. But also they make uh, made-to-order uh, custom shoes, which one of them is today's review pair and we're going to talk about that. Uh, prices. Uh, prices go between 1,250 euros and 1,500 euros for the bespoke. And from that, 250 euros is uh, a personalized last that you can use if you need for further pairs and then is deducted from the price. So I would say that the general starting price for all these is about 1,250 euros. Uh, which is what uh, 1350 400 dollars around that point so you know that they are very expensive and they're made around the same area uh, like St. Christmas so let's see how they fare compared to those and in general compared to what we've discussed so far uh, as customary uh, I will be discussing everything regarding you know what I can see from the leather the construction the little details and in the end how was the fit and if it's pretty much worth your money or not, because this is a pretty good proposition on paper, but uh, only time will tell how it really fares. And let's get on with the show. Shall we begin? As you can see, we have a very, very special box here, which actually is a wine box and it's quite heavy as well. It has some laser engraving of the brand and even the winery it comes from, as you can see here, or the one they collaborate with. Now that's it pretty much, really nice and will make a great display piece. Look at this now. Fancy. So apart from the bubble wrap that I have removed from the components in here, what you get is rather simple. Of course, you get you know, your shoes, which are unfortunately inside some bubble wrap. Uh, in this case, uh, there was also a nice uh, belt, uh, which you know, matches the leather uh, of, the, uh, of the shoes. And it comes in this heavy sort of like basket weave a uh, really nice, looks traditional, you know, weaving a uh, little cream beige bag. And you have this awesome, really awesome cloth that has a, what seems to be a herringbone pattern in a great color that covers, you know, the, the rest. It's like a small blanket, you would say, and in my opinion, it serves not only to protect, but in a way act as a shoe bag because there aren't any, and that's one. That's something that I would think would need to be improved. Lastly, 
<laughs> well, you get a bottle of local wine, apparently, I guess, if you ask for it. And as you can see, that's pretty much it. That's the whole package. Your shoes, a pair of wine bottles, and alternatively, if you choose for a, a belt. A really nice package. Could be improved maybe with some added shoe bags, uh, just, you know, because bubble wrap is still bubble wrap. It will cost you, though, uh, a little more and comes with some downsides because, as you can see, this is a quite a heavy box. So it adds to the weight and it adds to the price. Uh, at this point, though, it makes it for, you know, excellent storage. I, if you're buying shoes that are as expensive as these, invest a little bit more and get one of these boxes. It's, it's magnificent. Now, let's move on. Now it's time to look at these beauties in detail. So, what do we have here? Uh, we have a really, really nice Splito Derby in uh, black hatch green leather, which apparently is from Horwin and it looks phenomenal. Uh, it's uh, definitely nicer than whatever was used on the St. Crispin's one I reviewed. And it looks a little bit more refined at some areas than the one I saw from Passus but generally very good quality and it feels so it feels so much better to hold just small details it's just nice so five eyelets classic uh, we have a nice samsung apron at the top and of course the split which in this case you can see is uh, invisible and we'll talk about it more later what else uh, you can see on the bottom a really really nice sole with some initials hammered uh, via nails here and of course a really nice uh, metal toe tip which i always recommend it's a good looking shoe right look at it uh it's a bit classic but you can see around some edges and some corners that it tries to be a little more modern and fancy i like it i prefer it than the and the mod uh, 508 more i would say it could be maybe due to the last so the leather is Corwin, it's great. Uh, as I can see, you know, the, the, the stitching all over the shoe is uh, it's really it's really good. And the details, as you can see here on on uh, like the facing and next to the next to the lacing system, it's it's very, very discreet, like here. And you can see that they didn't put any contrasting stitching apart from a little bit at the apron area. And I think aesthetically. This makes it superb. Very interesting. You can see that uh, on the uh, laces uh, there are some like bigger anglets. Maybe you can see uh, with a bit of marking, and <laughs> it adds just a little bit of weight on the laces, but it just keeps them down and looking nice. And the laces themselves are actually they feel very good quality. They're not that thin. They don't look bulky. I like them very very much. And now let's discuss all the details that we can find, uh, you know, or like see on the shoe. Um, I don't have information for you about the last. Uh, bespoke, it doesn't really matter because you you make your own last in the end. But this one uh, seems to be from, you know, what they have readily available. And it is, you know, a more chiseled Almondi last. Uh, I, I like it very much. I, I think it's aesthetically pretty nice. You can see how pointed it is here. It's not specifically, it doesn't seem uh, too elongated, but it still has a nice curvature, uh, especially at the front. You can see it here, like how it curves here, and as well how on the profile, you know, this nice drop that goes towards the vamp and the toe area. Really nice. What I have to say though, you know, nitpicking, but I think it's important to share, is that in both shoes, at the, the split, it's uh, it's not straight. I mean, you can see it's a little crooked. It doesn't really matter, uh, but I, I suppose that a little better job could be done here. I'm not familiar exactly with uh, clicking and the stitching, but it could have been a little better. And maybe you can see as well that in both shoes, it's not exactly even, right? especially here at the top. I think you can see that it's not exactly even. That's a bit of a minus point, I suppose. Nothing important, but an area maybe they can uh, improve on. 
let's see. Of course, uh, these are handmade shoes, so they are hand welted, hand lasted, and hand sewn with uh, a hand stitched waist. So, if you look at the profile, you can see that the sole is. It seems to be a little thicker, actually. I'm pretty sure you can adjust this, but it's a little bit thicker here. I think it will add in the longevity, and this is a JR sole, so it will last for a long time, <laughs> for sure. And you can see that the trimming of the weld and the fudging is excellent, and if you really, really go, you know, and look, you will see all the stitches going inside the ridges, and especially on the waist, which is rather tight, like if you push the leather on the back, you can even see the stitching that it's a stitched waist. So really good there. And I guess it's time to talk about the sole as well. So the sole, uh, it's, uh, you can see here that it's not finished perfect at the moment, but it, this is because I've been using it to take some pictures and just put it on the, on the floor, etc. Uh, it looked great when it came in. Uh, closed channel, uh, hidden stitching, uh, always at the front, very, very well done. Uh, you can't really see anything, uh, but you can see, again, which seems to be a trademark of the Eastern Europe, that there is a channel uh, around next to the waist area, which, which is fine, and it shows that it's handsome as well. Some nails here and there, and of course, the hammered initials uh, of, uh, of the, the viewer that's in kindly sent the shoes. Really nice. You can pretty much make whatever you want. You can make wine bottles, uh, you can make uh, cups, you can put your initials. It's it's a really nice touch. Of course, really nice uh, tight waist uh, with uh, some slight, not, you know, very extreme fiddleback. Still really good as you can see. Uh, the metal toe tips, they are also very well done, I would say. Uh, you can see maybe that they have some slight sort of like discoloration at the the, the bottom or the, the top part. Oh, nothing really that matters, but it's really well done. And if you look at the profile and you can really barely see it, they, they have sanded it down perfectly. Lastly, let's talk about uh, the back seam here, which has, it looks like a small variation of the classic dog tail. Uh, it, you know, just one center seam here and it, curves to well, the left or the right, depending on how you see it. Uh, it doesn't look as seamless as I have seen it before, but uh, it just, it's just a good job, nothing special there. I actually like how the cup, you know, the heel block and your the, the heel in the back of the shoe, they transition together. I think it looks aesthetically nice. It's not maybe as tight as we have seen in other shoes, but I think it looks good. Like, look at it. It just has just enough in between and it just curves nicely at towards the bottom. Really good job. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, everything looks very high-end, high material, uh, especially the, the edge dressing all over the shoe is superb. Looking at this side, uh, I mean, there's not so much to say because, uh, I mean, you do have a full like insole, as you can see, uh, which is rather smooth and only has some, you know, brand markings here. There is no uh, handwritten stuff uh, on the left or the right or under the tongue, uh, which, I don't know, it could be a nice touch, I suppose. The in the, the lining, it's also pretty well trimmed apart from some, some areas, like, I mean, it doesn't matter, but you can see here that it's a, it's a little rough around some edges. Overall, pretty good. Not much to say about this place. Uh, it's quite standard and good in most high-end shoes, I suppose. Hand shoe trees. Let's talk about those as well. Branded, of course, like lasered here. Uh, they're very, very, very smooth. It feels very high quality uh, wood. Uh, they're not hollowed, so they're not exactly, they don't look as high-end, let's say, as the Sun Creed Spins ones, but they're really, they're very lightweight, like, they're actually very lightweight. And they have some, you know, the brass metallic uh, rods, uh, makes it quite easy to, to handle. Uh, there's, you know, this is very easy to, to grip and pull it out of the shoe. 
Overall, it's a pretty good street tree. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with it and I, I think it looks aesthetically superb. Like, just look at them. Really nice, huh? Very nice profile as well. And that's about it for uh, the close-up. So let's move on. I hope you really enjoyed the close-up. And I certainly did. This is a really nice pair of shoes. Um, I'm very excited and happy to, you know, have it in front of me and like just handle it and uh, see what's up. Before I tell you all about, you know, what I think about the general value and the build quality and all this and generally how it feels, uh, let's discuss one really important aspect, which is, of course, the fit. Uh, if you remember, since they look quite similar to the St. Crispins I reviewed uh, on the Classic last, uh, you can probably find it uh, on the cards there, um, the, the fit, it's, it can be more complicated. Of course, if you can go for like, the bespoke route or you make your own last, then you would have to send some measurements or you would have to be measured in person. So fit is not really a discussion there. Uh, however, uh, this one was just a made to order and there is not much information online, uh, at least, you know, from what I could find about how many lasts they have or, you know, the different lasts they have. Um, so I can work off only with what I have, uh, which, which is this one. And I can tell you about the fit. So this pair is a UK 8 uh, or a US 9D. Um, if you follow the channel and if you see the other videos, you will see that this is generally my average true to size UK. And this one is actually, it fits fantastic. Just putting it briefly on, uh, I will tell you all about it. Uh, the instep area and the vamp is really snug, but not uncomfortable and it doesn't pressure my instep that much, especially on the right foot, which is a bit uh, higher instep. Uh, it's just comfortable enough, but there is not, you know, extra space, you would say. And that's it with uh, dress socks. Uh, also, when it comes to this area, which is, you know, the widest part of the foot, right behind my, you know, like next to my fifth metatarsal and the little toe, uh, it's uh, much more roomy than, let's say, the passus, which was definitely very narrow last. Uh, but how it curves here, it just fits my foot perfectly. Now, I have not worn it for, you know, a long time, or nor I can walk with it more. Uh, but just standing, uh, like still taking a few steps, it feels like there's just, you know, the right amount of space here as well, not too much pressure. Uh, the you know, overall form, uh, especially, you know, around under the ankle area is also great. There is just a pinch of uh, toe space at the front. And uh, what was even greater was uh, the heel cup and how it hugs my feet. Uh, if you remember from my St. Crispin's uh, review uh, from the classic last, uh, everything was uh, equally perfect, pretty good, but there was just a tiny bit of space behind the heel. It was not hugging my, my heel perfectly, let's say. Uh, this one, on the other hand, uh, fits superb. It hugs my, like, it hugs my heel very, very well, but again, without too much pressure. It just feels snug and nice. Uh, like there's no extra space. Uh, I really enjoy the fit on these. I think this is one of the best uh, ready to wear fits Just by try on shoes and there is also a little bit of extra trivia uh, I've been watching you know like many of you possibly uh, Kirby Allison's the hanger project and I never really understood when he was talking about putting on some You know well-fitting or bespoke shoes and there is this sort this hiss this air that's coming when you put your foot in and uh, this is exactly what happened with these and also my muff days. When I put my foot in, you know, the the air, the trapped hair, it gets smooth from the heel area and it makes this and like there's no place for any more air and it just feels and fits great. So that's about the fit. Uh, I would say take your regular true to size UK, so anywhere from Mermin Hero, Carmina Rain, uh, your most uh, Crockett and Jones uh, lasts, uh, St. Crispin's, uh, at least the classic last, and you should probably size down half from your Antonio Meccariello, uh, Gaziano Girling, TG73, and Deco. 
uh, Sam or most Edward Green lasts, uh, Pierre Corté, etc. That's pretty much it about the fit. But uh, as I always say, make sure since this is a made to order process to always mail and discuss with the owners of Petron Claymore because they're going to give you the best advice and, you know, tailor it regarding, you know, when it comes to your foot or some individual things that you might need to adjust on your last, etc. Very good fit though, uh, straight out of the box, really great shoes. And now we already discussed pricing, which is about, let's say in dollars, 1,350, give or take. And uh, it's pretty good value when you're thinking about the high end. So these are a, around or a little cheaper than Sun Crispins. And I keep mentioning Sun Crispins because these come from the same area. Uh, but to be fair, there is absolutely no way I personally would not choose this like, or like Sun Crispins over this. It just feels better to hold, to look and in every almost possible aspect. I, very, I, I respect Sun Crispins very much, as you guys from our previous video. But the finishing was a bit sketchy, the design was a bit uh, meh. I'm not sure. Uh, this feels like a, and looks like a very well balanced shoe. I I enjoy looking at it. I enjoy handling it. The finishing f is it's it's superb. The finishing is great, and the leather feels much better than the Sun Crispins one. If you don't like, you know, uh, creasing and all this kind of stuff, I would probably avoid it. I would get this absolutely any day of, uh, if I'm looking for a, such a style with a little bit of refinement. And that's the thing with some Crispins. I feel like they are too contemporary and too classic, while this seems to have a bit of a touch of modern and more refinement around some areas. Exactly as I like the, the waist here. Um, Definitely, if uh, if money or budget is not an issue, and you want a handmade product, I think you you should give them a chance or at least explore the possibilities. Um, compared to let's say English shoes, which nothing about them is handmade, uh, construction-wise, this definitely has the edge. But if you already have a nice collection or you want to expand your horizons and try something different. Uh, I mean, even for bespoke, one hundred, one thousand six hundred and fifty dollars is not much uh, for these days. Uh, these are great. Uh, I can absolutely recommend them. And if you're looking for the more contemporary, little modern Eastern European style, I think pretty much this is some of the best they have on offer right now. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. And uh, if you're saying like. You got the shoes, like, uh, are you getting anything out of this? No, I mean, this is not even my pair. And it's like, I don't have any affiliation with any of them. I don't get paid for this. It's just my opinion, my unbiased opinion. I think, I think these are phenomenal. I am, I'm very happy to have had this opportunity. So that's all I had to say about uh, these shoes from Petru and Claymore, Transylvania. Superb shoes, amazing leather, uh, very nice design. Excellent soul, excellent futures, like amazing box presentation and pretty much very good value for money if you're looking for a great handmade shoe with a pretty good fit as well, I would say. Um, I would like to hear what you guys have to say about this. Uh, for the shoes in general, if you would consider them, what would you like to make and of course what you would like to see in the future from the channel including some comments if you have about the ever-growing and improving uh, background at the back or lighting, etc. That's about it for today. And if you enjoyed the video, I would really, really appreciate it if you leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so I can bring you more amazing content. But before you go, stay on for about another, you know, 30 more seconds for the bad dad joke of the week. What did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies! <laughs> oh, this one takes the cake. Uh, as always, if you have some really bad dad joke you'd like to share, leave it down in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>